Okay, the capacitor's been charged probably up to maybe 4, 5, 6 volts. And we're going to allow it to discharge through this wire. We're going to observe what happens to the compasses. Okay, so we saw that this compass, it's, it's a little hard to see what it did. It's small, but the main thing is it was reacting a lot more to the magnetic field created by this wire, cre cre created by the current in the wire, than this one was, because this one has a greater spatial extent, it's bigger, and the magnetic field falls off pretty rapidly away from the wire. But we saw what happened. We saw that this wire, or this compass, deflected in this direction. Now if we had a much greater current, the compass would deflect so that the needle is really pretty much aligned with the wire, with the direction of the current. So that we see that a current in the wire creates a current in its vicinity. It turns out, and I said the current in the wire, the current in the wire creates a magnetic field in its vicinity. And that magnetic field, it turns out, surrounds the wire. If this is the wire, the magnetic field surrounds the wire in the sense that the magnetic field is always tangent to the circle that surrounds the wire through a given point. We have to draw that to see how it works. And we'd have to do a lot more experimentation to see. Um, if we were to put the compass on top of the wire, which is a little tricky to do because it tends to tip the compass, we would see it deflect in the opposite direction. Now you put that together and you get the beginnings of understanding the rule that relates the current to the magnetic field it produces.